talking. Hello, Bill. So what did we saw in the last two hours and what was the idea behind it? Well, what we saw was testimony from people around the planet about the effects of the biggest company on the planet on their lives, on the places where they live. This grows out of the um, emerging news of Exxon's serial deceptions. Uh, um, and really, as the court said at the end, perhaps the greatest corporate crime in history. And what needs to happen to become this dry reality? Well, already uh, authorities in parts of the world are beginning investigations. In New York State, the Attorney General has subpoenaed large quantities of documents from Exxon. We need many others, the Department of Justice in the United States and legal authorities in all the other countries where Exxon operates to begin probing them in the same way. And what can the movement of climate justice can do in favor for, for dealing for this? We can uh, uh, organize uh, in all the places. Look, I went and got arrested at the uh, Exxon station near me uh, just to try and draw attention to these crimes. There's Exxon and Esso stations all over the planet, so there's plenty of places for people to go make a stand. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Bye. Well, you know, looking to, to do something physical and tangible about, you know, changing the, the reality on the planet. And many people don't know what they can do beyond coming to an event like this and actually, you know, being able to keep somebody, a large corporation like Exxon accountable to something like that. Well, but what do you say people that can do, the average person? The good news about Exxon is that they're uh, everywhere. I went and got arrested at the uh, Exxon station in Burlington, Vermont, mm. um, just to try and draw attention to this, just sat peacefully in front of their pump and closed it down for a while. Um, that's the sort of thing that people can do all around the world, wherever there's an Exxon or a Mobile or an Esso station. Mm. And what are you hoping the legal action, do you think that legal action is going to take place anytime soon? I do. I think that the New York Attorney General has already launched an investigation. We think others will join him. Um, and we think what they'll do is be able to discover all the documents that provide the history of how Exxon has done what it's done for all these years. Mm, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you think that we need the new tribunals, new... New trials, new, uh, like uh, tribunal for crimes, uh, for war crimes? I don't, I, that I don't know. I'm no legal expert. I hope that just as with tobacco, our legal systems will be competent to figure out how to address this kind of crime. It's, of course, difficult because the amounts of money and things at stake are so enormous. There's not enough money in the world to pay for the damage that Exxon and the others have done. So it's novel ground for, uh, new ground for our legal system. But let's hope that they figure out how to deal with it. Have you ever tried to sit down with the CEO of ExxonMobil? Uh, have you any, uh, we've over the years have, have uh, asked uh, to be involved with them and they've not been over eager. Probably because we've been um, highly critical of them for a long time. Ken Cohen, uh, the Exxon representative, recently uh, stepped down or seems to have early retirement. That I don't know anything about. <laughs> Do you think they're scared? I don't know if they're scared. I mean, they have all the money in the world, so that tends to, you know. Um, but I, I think that they're beginning to realize that um, their arrogance uh, is catching up with them. Whether it'll catch up with them legally, who knows. But uh, the best defense I've heard anybody mount for them so far is that they were merely morally reprehensible, not actually criminal. Um, if that's the best defense you've got, it's, um, it's kind of sad. You get like a very weak treatment. Uh, are you afraid that people will be disappointed the same way they have been after Cape Copenhagen? No, it won't. I think the climate movement is now robust and strong, and we will continue. We know that we're not getting what we need. So we know where to ask. And one of the first places, one of the first doors to knock on has, you know, the words Exxon Mobil on the front. In the Gelände play, you know this uh, great protest and the I German think, Lignite Man. I think that was one of the most inspiring moments of the last year, uh, watching people do that. We can't, you know, physically shut down the fossil fuel industry only for a day or so at a time. But we are in the process of shutting them down through divestment, through just constant hammering of all kinds. It's hard for them to build new projects, it's hard for them to get new money, and it will get harder. So this can be a real risk for 
companies like Vattenfall who try to sell their lignite coal mines in Germany. Anybody who's um, anybody who's now still in the business, so going into the business of fossil fuel, is morally culpable, but they're also financially at risk. What do you think of Australia's recent plan to double its coal production? I don't think there's any chance that Australia will double its coal production. I think that the um, uh, activists there are plenty powerful enough to make sure that, in fact, the big new coal mines don't get built. And we've been very happy to watch people in the Galilee Basin and elsewhere. Uh, look, Australia's politics are dominated by, uh, you know, it's by its minerals industry. They're enormously politically powerful, but they are a fading industry. And that's thanks to enormous good work by scientists, activists, Aboriginal people, uh, everyone across the Antipodes.